Welcome to PDMA Corporation, home of the MCE Max. I'd like to thank you for joining us as we continue along in our module series discussing the benefits of the MCE Max using the six fault zone approach to analyzing your electric motors. Today, specifically, we're going to focus on the stator fault zone. But before we get going, let's talk about PDMA Corporation. We manufacture the Emax for dynamic testing, the MCE for static testing, and we've combined both dynamic and static testing capabilities into one highly accurate field portable technology called the MCE Max. Now, as we mentioned earlier, PDMA Corporation utilizes a six fault zone approach to analyzing your electric motors. They are power quality, power circuit, insulation, rotor, air gap, and stator. And today specifically, we're going to focus on the stator fault zone. So what are some of the problems in the stator fault zone that can occur? Well, you can have turn-to-turn -turn fault, phase-to-phase -phase fault, faulty connections within the motor, and core loss. Now, in the turn-to-turn -turn fault and phase-to-phase -phase fault, keep in mind the six fault zone approach. When we look at, say, the power circuit, we're trying to make sure that the whole power circuit is evenly balanced. If you have any type of unbalance, you could be creating excess heat in the circuit. That excess heat could destroy insulation, and that destroying of insulation could potentially cause a turn-to-turn -turn fault or face-to-face -face fault as that insulation breaks down. Another thing that could break down or cause a turn-to-turn face-to-face -face is possibly high vibration, where it rubs away on the, uh, the actual insulation. Or think about the rotor fault zone. If you have an anomaly in the rotor, could be creating high heat in that rotor. That rotor is very close to the stator. And that excess heat could also potentially degrade the insulation of that stator. When we look at faulty connections within the motor, we're talking here about maybe dead solder connections, faulty solder connections inside the motor. Core loss, or maybe loss of, uh, of la core lamination. Essentially here, we're worried about excess heat as well. And that excess heat, could destroy that insulation over time and cause a potential fault inside the stator. So, how would we analyze a stator fault with our MCE technology? Well, as we see here, we're looking at our resistive imbalance and our inductive imbalance. And the reason why these are important, i.e., as we mentioned earlier, if we change resistance in one of the phases, that will create a resistive imbalance potentially current imbalance, excess heat. Inductive imbalance, same thing. As we lose turns in one of the phases, that will change the inductance measurement, and that inductance measurement will create, in, uh, in one of those phases, if we've lost turns, will create a higher inductive imbalance and cause this number to go into the red and increase as you lose turns. Now, what will the RIC look like? Well, what is a RIC? or rotor influence check. Essentially, a rotor influence check is a measurement of phase-to-phase -phase inductance over rotation. We apply a high-frequency field to the stator, and we rotate the rotor through that high-frequency field. And we measure inductance in degrees, as we can see here. Now, what we would expect to see when we have an issue with our stator fault is if we've lost turns, we'll see separation in the phase. It's no longer sinusoidal and equal like we saw on the previous screen. We see separation due mainly in part to the loss of turns in the stator. Now, what if the motor is running? Well, in case of the motor is running, what we would look for with the Emax, with our, our results page here, is we're looking for current imbalance and we're looking at impedance imbalance. Keep in mind, once again, if we've lost resistance, that means we've changed the resistance for that phase. Thus, we create some form of resistive imbalance, possible current imbalance, as we can see here, creating excess heat. Same thing with impedance imbalance. If we lose turns, we've changed our inductance. Thus, from an online perspective, we've changed our inductive reactance. 
being that its inductive reactance is equal to 2 times pi times frequency times inductance. And if we change inductance, we'll change the inductive reactance. And thus, we'll change our impedance and give us an impedance imbalance. Now, keep in mind, the goal is once we've found this, like we mentioned earlier, you're going to have to get this repaired or replace. So, the goal actually is to prevent these conditions from occurring by utilizing the six fault zone approach to analyzing your electric motors to catch the problem before it becomes catastrophic. I'd like to thank you for your time. If you require any more information, please contact PDMA Corporation. You can reach us at PDMA at PDMA.com or call us at 813-621-6463, extension 118. Once again, thank you for your time and have a great day.